The way we went about selecting the finishes of our home was concentrating on what we already had in our rental property. It comes, I guess, and stems from the lifestyle we live, which is we love beach and we love gym, we like being outdoors. So we have got a very Hampton style and coastal style house. So for us, we already knew what we wanted and we already had that foundation in our rental. So it was just when it came to selecting colours and materials, things that really supported that. So really neutral colours, whites and dark coloured floorboards were exactly what we were looking for. So on top of that, the other thing we got a lot of inspiration for was uh, Instagram was very, very helpful. That gave us a lot of inspiration. Um, also, some of the builders have uh, a Facebook page um, that's sort of a lot of tips of people already building. Um, and the one that we found, there was everything that you could ever imagine on that page. I'm not sure how many ideas or changes or things that we got from that. Uh, things that you just don't simply think of. And um, for example, like a facade light, making sure that there's got a little wooden bracket behind it. Um, things that you just would not even cross your mind and um, by far that was probably the biggest advice that we got and as you go through the build process you're able to give back a little bit of that by posting photos of your home. So it's, it's fun to do that but um, that's also helping those people now going through that tender and contract stage. Who was the decision maker? Uh, I was very lucky and I got to choose that we have a three car garage. You chose other things too though. Like you signed off on stuff. <laughs> and I think that's the key right there. I got to sign off on a few things. Um, no, I guess, in honesty, like there was a lot of things that um, we used straight away and agreed on. Um, and there was quite a lot uh, of things that we disagreed on. And we initially started with a point system. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that didn't last all that long. Um, but along the way, we did um, compromise uh, for the most part. Um, and overall, Steph, I guess, was the decision maker. <laughs> Uh, if we're talking about how long this process took us in terms of the build, we found our block of land in October last year and we also, on the exact same day, we also decided on our house and our house contract, the exact plans that we wanted. We settled in January, so for us it was a very quick process, but we're both fairly impatient, so it was <laughs> what we were wanting. We didn't want a long withdrawn process, we wanted it to be quite quick and get us into our house fairly soon. Overall, it was only a three appointments um, that we had to do to choose all colours and, and um, I guess the selections that we wanted and, and that was by far enough time and um, it actually goes quite easily and quite quickly. So the three appointments that you do need or that we had with our builder was the first one was our tile appointment. So it's walking through selecting everything from your floor tiles to your wall tiles um, and anything in between. The second appointment that we do have is our electrical appointment. So that is fully based on where you want your light fittings to be, facade lights, power points, and everything in between. One little thing that we did learn going through this process was for us quite often doing your electrical through your build and the builder you choose can be quite expensive and that is the case for lots of builders. So lots of people do do the bare minimum with their builder uh, and then get someone to come in after handover and after you've got your keys to your house and replace the base electrical and upgrade it. So for example, if you've got baton lights as a base electrical, you get someone to come in after handover and replace them all and put down lights in. It's quite a cheaper way to go and it can save you thousands. This is what we did and it saved us close to $8,000 for example. The third appointment that we have is our colour appointment. So that was something where we chose the wall colour, our garage doors, our screens, blinds, uh, what carpet you want. A uh, little thing that we did learn in here as well was also uh, the underlay for your carpet. So there's a different ranges of underlay. For example, we went the 10 millimetre, so it just makes it that really plush, comfy looking carpet, the one you wanna lay on that's really, it's nice to be on. The recommendations I guess for uh, that we would love to provide would be to go visit the showrooms first. Uh, you will find out who, what suppliers that the builders use uh, and you'll also find out where their showroom is um, and they generally have viewing. So our builder had a viewing on a Saturday morning that we could go through, look at what was there and you can see what things you're, you're comfortable with in, in the base range and things that just you do need to upgrade. Um, and, and same with the tile selection, um, they were super helpful tile shops so um, go for a walk have a look through um, and make sure that's included from your, your first contract. There's a number of upgrades uh, that we sort of made uh, through the building process that we'd love to recommend to others. 
Um, a couple of things that we uh, really that were important to us and, and had available. Um, the first one was colour bond roof um, for a number of reasons. We wanted to sort of, even just to the Queensland, listening to the rain on the roof, um, something so basic, but it was important to us to have that colour bond roof. Um, so that was an upgrade that um, we had. Along with the, we were sort of lucky actually, our builder had a promotion at the time, which allowed us to upgrade the steel frame um, and solar panels uh, all in the one go, uh, which was a great upgrade. Um, the other thing for us, we had the room and it was important to us. However, the cost over the, the benefit and the value was the third car garage. If you've got the room, uh, ask your builder the cost and, and you might be surprised. We're going to use it obviously for toys, jet skis, that sort of thing, but even just having that additional storage um, and also increasing uh, value down the line, um, that was a huge thing for us. Mervac and Everly's uh, online portal for their landscaping and for their covenant is quite strict, but it does ensure that all of the homes built in this estate are built to the most pristine and perfect level. And I think that's what the portal really does uphold and ensure it's easily obtainable, is by providing all of that information. And it really does end up leaving your house looking phenomenal. So it's a great resource for us to be able to have, but also for our builder, our landscaper. It's all online, so it's easily accessible. It's a fantastic option. It has got everything documented so thoroughly, it makes the entire process seamless and so easy. However, we were very, very fortunate that you've got an application where you need to put in your landscaping portal. Oh, sorry, your landscaping request through to the portal. And for us, they give you so much feedback and information of what, if it wasn't approved, what you need to do to include it in. And it made it a very, very easy process. Our landscaping is something that we put a lot of thought into. We know that we're people that like to be out on the weekends, so it was really important for us not to have a garden or a landscape that meant that Jacob was going to have to be mowing the grass and doing everything all of the time. So it was having a low maintenance garden. So for us, it was a lots of thought, investigation, actually driving around the Everly Estate, seeing what other people had done, adapting that information into our plan for what we wanted in our house. Um, and then looking at the portal, seeing what was allowed and what suggestions they had uh, was how we went about it.